Hello, my name is Shonin Bronchen and I'm a PhD student at the University of Zurich and EOLOG. I'd like to warmly welcome you to my flash talk about the biomonitoring of macroinvertebrates in Swiss rivers using environmental DNA. Natural ecosystems such as rivers are complex networks based on abiotic and biotic interactions. Biodiversity monitoring is essential to the understanding of ecological processes, but also to inform management and conservation of these threatened habitats. Today, I'm going to talk about the ecological assessment of Swiss surface waters using macroinvertebrate indicator groups as part of the water quality assessment in Switzerland. In 2019, macroinvertebrate communities at 92 river sites spread across the major Swiss catchments were surveyed. The sampling consisted of kicknet sampling and the collection of eDNA filter replicates. The indicator community composition was traditionally analyzed in the framework of a biotic index, the IBCH index. In this index, the more taxa that are present at a site and the higher their indicator value, so the responsiveness to stressors, the higher would be the index score for this site. In this study, we evaluated the comparability of eDNA sampling to KickNet in order to describe the diversity of macroinvertebrates and to assess the ecological integrity of rivers. I'm gonna quickly introduce you to the workflow of eDNA sample processing. First, DNA was extracted from all filters in a clean room environment. In a two-step PCR protocol, we targeted a broad range of metazoans with the primers developed by Lira and Geller. The multiplexed library was sequenced on an Illumina MySec platform, resulting in 26.4 million reads. The raw data was quality filtered, bioinformatically processed, and the resulting OTUs were mapped against a customized taxonomic database. Moving on to the results of our study. In a first step, we analyzed the diversity at a site level and on a global level. eDNA detected significantly less indicators on a site level. However, when comparing the KickNet to environmental DNA overall, the same groups are commonly detected. Among the most frequent ones were also groups with high indicator scores in the biotic index, such as the orders of Ephemeroptera, Trichoptera, and Plecoptera. In a second step, we wanted to evaluate the utility of eDNA in the assessment of the ecological state. For this purpose, we trained a supervised machine learning algorithm. All OTUs belonging to macroinvertebrate indicator communities were used as predictive features and fed into a random forest classifier. The KickNet based index score was used as the response variable. We then assessed the agreement between the observed value here on the x axis and the predicted value based on eDNA here on the y axis. The random forest approach successfully predicted the classification for 71% of all samples. With an R square of 0.61 and Cohen's kappa of 0.53, this indicates a good agreement between the two methods. As a conclusion, we can say that on a global level, eDNA retrieved indicator communities that were comparable to the KitNet samples. And we demonstrated that eDNA in combination with the supervised machine learning algorithm is a useful approach to interpret eDNA in an ecological context. With this, I want to thank you for your attention and I'm open to questions.